Hey everybody, Anthony Dodge, the model train outsider, the Mariclean outsider, back with another catalog go through. This time it is the big one for me, Mariclean's newest announcements. A couple of surprises. So rather than babble about it, let's get straight into it. I'll try to go quickly. My apologies, but uh, sometimes I do stop and talk about something. Uh, the catalog always opens up with some of their big announcements. Now, this one they've already announced, but it is technically new for 2023. So uh, it's here on the front page. This is the Albatross, which is a Slovakian steam locomotive and revitalized and redone by the Slovakian government and still runs. And so to celebrate it, the Merklin is making a very special model of this available to everybody because I'll talk about what's not available to everybody in the next couple of pages. Okay, the first couple of pages here are the MHI, Merklin Handler Initiative. This is meant to help the My Shop model, Bond Shop Lippa is too big, so they're not a part of the MH1. And so they've got this beautiful little Class 1100 electric locomotive from uh, just after World War II uh, from the Dutch State Railway. And um, they're releasing a rake of cars. Now, I believe Merklin was saying the first time they released it, um, it was in 1964. And so it's like almost the 60th birthday anniversary for it. And then they're releasing a rake of Rheingold cars to go with it. Now, this is from the German Federal Way Railway. So it's a Dutch train, but the Rheingold ran down the Rhine. So it went from the Netherlands down the Rhine to uh, Switzerland. And I'm trying to remember which one, and I apologize, uh, brain fart. But um, one of these, I'll point out which one of the two. Either it's this rake of cars or another rake of cars, Merklin said they're releasing in true 187 scale. But even this magazine, um, online magazine, does not say which one. I have to go back and rewatch the video. And I watched the German version. All right. So gorgeous set of cars. But the Rhine Gold cars I see a lot. Not my era. But hey, hopefully it's cool for somebody. And you can't have a release without a form of the 103. So here's Merklin's big 103 retooled and it's the first time in a couple of years they've done it in this older Deutsche Bahn livery. Um, and again, this is for the MHI, but it's got um, working panograph, you know, digitally controlled panograph and the driver actually moves. He can turn in his seat, he can wave his hand. It's, it's kind of cool. You'd have to watch the video, which I'll link all that stuff to below. All right, so more about it, plus they're releasing a rake of, this pulled the old German uh, Interregios, the IRs, as they were called, the Interregio, um, which nowadays would be the Regio Bonds, as you might hear me say. A lot of functions, cool-looking locomotive for what it is. Not necessarily my thing, because it's not my era. And then they're releasing a set of lit cars to go with it, and they're really excited about the Bistro Wagon, for whatever reason. Uh, but here's the rake of cars to go with it. And that top wagon, I guess it's the sculpting. And you can pause this and read the screen because I do want to get through this quickly. But they're all lit, which means they'll be a bit more expensive. Prices are not here. The prices will be released in a day or two. Okay, and the first of the steam locomotives that they are showing off here are Class 01. Um, I think my Christmas train is a Class 01. I think... And they're releasing a rake of cars. And maybe it was this rake of cars that they said was going to be true scale. Like I said, there's they announced one set of cars they're releasing is going to be true scale. And um, I'm not seeing it here. But again, you'll I wouldn't be able to buy these anyhow from my shop. I'd have to find some other online shop, small shop, to buy these from. But nice, cool set of cars. Uh, the way they look, 1928, 1930. Again, you can read all that. Uh, just not my era, although I do have some cars from this era. My Rheingold is from this era as well. But I, I think I've got this era covered. All right, here's a Class 44. Now, this one hits me a little better. And this will actually come back later in the manual. But again, these are all MHIs. Uh, so only certain shops will get these. 
anybody can buy them, but you can only buy them from shops that are members of the MHI program. This one I like a little better, the red scheme. Uh, but there is one steamer a little bit later, I'll show you, that I really do like and would consider getting. But really, I won't get it. But Class 44, and again, advertising the new decoders. A lot of their classic trains, they're upgrading with the newest MFX Plus decoders, the world of operations, and so forth. you got to go back to one of my Merklin uh, series to understand what world of operations is. Now we go into the kitty stuff, and I'll just zip through it because I do want to say for a minute, this is the stuff for three to seven-year-olds. But they have really upgraded. It's called My World. And... Um, each box has a loop of track, a little handheld joystick-like controller, and a locomotive and some kind of coaches to pull. But the biggest thing is they are now making this stuff. They make play sets with this, and they're making the locomotive and rolling stock more realistic. The original few series were kind of kiddie, too kitty looking but for kids, it's fine. As an adult, you're like, oh, wow, why'd they do that? But now they're really trying to, even though it's still battery-operated, infrared-controlled vehicles, they're definitely, um, and all plastic, they're definitely making it um, more realistic. So the sliding cars, look at this one. You got a, a crane uh, that comes with its own little motorized puller, and the crane can stop, and the little legs fold out, and brace it and you can play that they've got a swiss this is all new the swiss glacier express actually the three previous one i've shown you are all new so i'll just kind of zip through this but you can see and they make play sets for this add-on car and these are very cool okay now we're into what is called the um startup and this is basically ages six seven eight up to 12 13 Many cases, they still have the handheld joystick controller, which supposedly is easier to operate. Um, but they are more metal, and they run on Merklin C track. But so they are technically still digital, but the controller is battery operated infrared. Uh, my Emma works the same way. All right. And then some rolling stacks. So this is Haribo, and they add an additional car to it. They made last year they released a Halloween car, so they're releasing a new one to go with the Halloween set. Uh, you've got this little construction train set, um, the uh, fire train, which actually is kind of cool. I mean, it's actually kind of cool looking with the fire truck on the. And now we're going to get into a little bit more. This is now where the catalog begins. Now they start off with a couple of start sets. Uh, this is an old start set they're bringing back. There's like eight of them they rotate. There's about eight of them they rotate. But in a start set, digital starter set, uh, you get a loop of track. Everything you see up there you get. You get a loop of track with a siding. Uh, you get... Um, the Merklin Mobile Station 2 digital hand controller. And you'll get this all for somewhere between $150 and $200. But it's full digital, not nearly as many functions. These usually will have, well, you can see up there, uh, it's like six functions. Uh, so, yeah, the starter sets will usually not have a lot of digital, but it does have digital. Okay. And the cars won't be lit. They're, it's the lower end of their car sets. And then here is a steam, because they'll always have some sort of modern era, old era, something in between, a freight starter set. So here's their steamer starter set, a class 24 with a rake of cars to go with it. And this one, it's advertising now. You can add a smoke unit. Actually, it has a smoke unit in it. So this one will actually smoke, which is pretty cool for a starter set. That didn't used to, but that's why they're saying now it has a smoke. And so uh, here's another starter set. Uh, this one advertises a Belgian little uh, class uh, 8000 uh, little mini diesel train, and the light on top works. And again, you get a loop of track and a digital controller. Notice you don't get the sighting on this one. 
uh, and freight stuff. And then here is a class 94 locomotive and this is beginning their big things. They were really high on this. Uh, it's not my thing. I mean, I love the black and red contrast uh, on these, but uh, the class 94, again, you can pause these and look at these if you wanna read more about it. Lots of digital functions and they usually throw in pictures in these catalogs of it. And you get some matching uh, wagons that will go with it, that fit it for what it did and its era, including this little extra set too. So you get four cars in one set and then you buy this little uh, end of line car. And then here are some wagons that they're releasing. And these are going with the locomotive that's gonna come up late in a, a page or two but these are uh redone and uh these are all lit up now the these this there's two sets of this so you get four cars total but two sets of two and they're all let lit up and they go with this uh class v100 locom diesel locomotive which again is even though it's a smaller bit it's they're higher and you look up in the upper right hand corner at all the digital functions and again pause and look i'm just going to keep going through this now here's where they talk about this new rail car powered rail car they're doing the electric rail car this set i really liked what i saw in the video this is very sharp it's not my era i wouldn't buy it but if somebody else had this and showed it off i would be kind of goofy i'd go oh that's cool this is a gorgeous locomotive it lights up and the lighting inside as well as the interior work on it is really nice and i expect this to be high end i would be shocked that this is under uh, 550 dollars i would be shocked i see this being six to seven hundred dollars minimum but it's gorgeous and then here's another little train set train set means you don't get track or controller you just get the train so uh, you get this little uh, class 323 small diesel locomotive uh, you get a little uh, locomotive shed you can buy that goes with it then you get the little truck and two cars this would be very inexpensive but it's still you can see up there you got quite a lot of digital functions with it but it's a little starter set you know and it's small so you could throw this on radius one small loop a circle and you know see how you like digital if you wanted to get into uh, Maricline some other cars you could add to it as well um, you get these uh, hinged roof cars a uh, rake of three and I believe you even get that little truck that comes with it. Here's another one they were really excited about. This is a class 120 East German diesel. Uh, this was, if I remember correctly, this is called Stalin's Revenge. This was a really loud, obnoxiously loud East German uh, diesel. Powerful polar. Um, it's popular with collectors and historians. Uh, but East Germans called it Stalin's Revenge because it was so loud. And then when it came through towns, it just knocked everybody out of bed. And they tell you about it, and then the rake of tankers to go with it. All right. Hey, if Heath were to ever watch this video, here's an East German train car. So this would be, this was an East German circus, the Circus Busch. Um, and um, you've got this little East German circus. So all their freights is in here. I don't think this was the animals, but this would be carrying the tents and the you know, all the other stuff. Now, this is a conundrum. This is a class 218. If you follow my channel and pay attention, I want a class 218. And I actually have one already ordered from Roco. Now, I can cancel my order. They'll just put it in regular stock. Um, because I would rather get a Merklin. I've been waiting for years for Merklin to make a red 218 again. And uh, last year I bought the 218, the Caught Bus 218. That's the half black, half white one. So I do have a 218, but I want one in the German red. I also want one in the ocean blue and cream livery because when Joyce and I were in uh, southern Bavaria, southwestern Bavaria, we were seeing them in tandem like that everywhere. You would see a red and then an ocean blue and cream. Uh, this is a 218 new MFX Plus decoder, so it's going to have all kinds of functions on it. Uh, it's just a question of when they're going to release this. If they're not going to release this until the end of the year, then the Roco one is supposedly coming in uh, February. I'll get, I'll just get the Roco one. If this is going to come March or April, uh, I may, I'll just maybe go ahead, wait, and get it and get the Maryland one instead of the Roco one. 
and a picture of it. And then they are re-releasing uh, the Zilberlinga cars. Now, Zilberlingas were, uh, actually, that means little silver, little silver thing, Zilberlinga. Um, but Zilberlings were called Zilberlingas because they were originally silver. And then when Germany unified its rail system a bit, um, they repainted most of them red. Okay, so enough of that. So you can read these. Uh, now, this is a weird one because a year and a half ago, I think, two years ago, I bought a red. This is the Diesel DMU Class 648, the Lint class, uh, no, known as the Lint 41. Uh, but the biggest thing is they've changed the lighting in it and they've changed the signage in it. Normally the signage, like on the one I have, says Stuttgart. This one says Gießen, which is in the neighborhood of Stuttgart, but it says Gießen instead of Stuttgart. All right, this one uh, is interesting. This is one that's going on the maybe list. This is a Class 77. It's big. I kind of like how it looks. It looks like a 66 that's been stretched out even more. So it's kind of cool. I, I, I'm liking this one. So this is not one that is a definite but that's one that if time and release is right, maybe I'll pick it up. Very cool. A lot of functions. Big di diesel one. I don't want to get too much rate. Because the problem is, I also, this is one that's, um, whoops. <laughs> this is one that's going on the very, very maybe list. <laughs> As in probably. This is a class 249. If you look at it, it's a Vectron. Vectrons have that little silver three stripes each way. Uh, on the front, the Siemens Vectron. Um, and normally you think of it as a class 193, but this is the, the diesel class, which is called normally called 248. But they've remodeled many of these, and Deutsche Bahn is calling it class 249. It's dual mode. It is both diesel and electric. So um, I really like the looks of this. They're really excited about the interior. The grills are see-through. You can see both in the uh, main train picture as well as in the, um, you know, up in the upper right-hand corner with the light on in there, sort of the control panels and everything in there, uh, access panels and that. They're really excited about this. And I can see why it's pretty cool. Now, another version of this, which is still a class 248, shows up later. But I'm really excited for this one and I really like this one and I, Think this will find its way into my collection and then uh just a couple of little eye catchers you got a flat bed with lumber and uh, then you got a beer car stouter i have never heard of stouter so i would like to try a stouter anyhow uh you got this power track car you know track maintenance and such and uh Wiesman, uh, works with Merklin to do some of the electronics and the crane operation and so forth. But you can control this, so that's kind of cool. The crane operates in many different directions. And then here's that other livery. And I like this livery, too, to be honest. Uh, this is Rail Systems, which is a private company. But this is the Vectron Dual Mode, but this one is Class 248 as opposed to the Deutsche Bahn Class 249, but it's the same locomotive. Uh, so very cool. I do like that livery, but I would not get both. I'd get the Deutsche Bahn one. All right, let's keep going. And here's just more pictures of it. Again, this is a very cool looking lo um, locomotive. I really like both of these very much. All right, now back to the steamers. And we've got some Swiss stock to show you. A class 3.5, uh, the Haberzak. Uh, and they were excited about this because this is a retooling of a model they've made before. Um, and it's got the new Telex couplers. Because uh, Merklin, for whatever reason, uh, has redesigned some of their couplers. And they look basically the same, but they've redesigned how they're made and so on. So um, anyhow, and digitally controlled couplers. That's interesting. Maybe that's why they're remodeling. All right, and some cars that go with it. Now, I'm going to stop here just for a second because if there's anything in here in this book that disappointed me, and you know, usually I don't, is this freight, this set of three freight cars to go with that locomotive I just showed you. The locomotive's cool enough, but these are three of the most plasticky looking things I've ever seen Merklin release that wasn't part of their My World or Startup sets. These are just so plasticky. I don't know what they're going to charge for those, but if it's more than $50 for the three-car set, I wouldn't buy it because that 
those just do not look very done. Now, maybe they're prototypes. Maybe they're prototypes and the sliding doors work. But as they look here in this image, I wouldn't buy them. Even if I were into that, I wouldn't buy it. Those just look too plasticky, too cheap. Okay, and here is a Swiss Class 4.4. Um, you know, it's hard for me to say what type of locomotives I like and don't like. Usually it's the livery gets me. Because this one in a different livery I might think is really cool. This sort of drab green, just not, not really excited about it. Doesn't really do anything for me. Uh, the locomotive sells an old style and I like modern, but there are things of this era in similar types to this that I do like. And I think it must be the livery because, and there'll be one a little bit later that I'll show you, that kind of sh highlights the difference for me. But this is just sort of meh. Some rolling stock to go with it. That fuchsia almost uh, wagon in the middle gets your eyes there years before one because that goes back to the 70s and 80s. And then here is a German uh, heavy freight locomotive. Lots of functions. And you can't have a release here without everybody making the Omni, whoops, the Omnipresent uh, Class 460, the RE 460. This is like the modern Swiss loco. Everybody releases one to three variations of this. Sometimes Pico does five. Just different advertising liveries on it and so forth. Um, again, it's a cool enough locomotive, but I don't do Swiss. But it's it's fine enough. Some new uh, paint schemes, uh, and uh, they put in their new Super MFX Plus decoder to upgrade it. And they've released a set of cars. Now, this is the one, and I watched the German. I, I got to go back. I was going to watch the American one with uh, the American, the English one with Joyce later, just to let her see uh, some of this in action. So I watched the German, and this is the one that confused me. I um, So maybe I'll find out when I watch the English version. I couldn't tell if they said that this car set was normal because this is not a new car set they've released this set before but this is a retooling of it and i couldn't understand if they said they're releasing it in both one to 100 scale which is very common and one to 93 five scale which is close to true scale or if it always has been released in one to 100 and now they're releasing it in one to 93 five and I swear they said both. They said beide im ein, ein hundert und ein dreiundneunzig fünf. Um, one to one hundred. I swear they said both, that they were going to release it in both one to one hundred and one to ninety three. But right here, they're not saying which one it is. So either it's one ninety three, but usually when it's not the one to one hundred, if it's either true scale or 193.5 scale, they will announce it in here. But a nice set of cars. All right, here's that Class 44 we saw at the start. And again, it it doesn't do a whole lot for me. I know people who love Class 44s, love the German Steam 44s. It's one of the iconics uh, to a lot of German guys I follow. But it's all black, and I mean, again, I, I admire the engineering in it, but it doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't excite me. Rake of uh, tankers to go with it. Uh, and by the way, this is an Austrian version and a rake of uh, tankers to go with it. Now, here's the steamer of all the steamers they're releasing. This is one that um, won't find its way into my collection, but the temptation is there. And the number one reason it is that it's French, and it's not that I'm against the French. Uh, it's just I run German trains or Austrian and check. Um, I don't do French, okay, because it's the areas I travel, but this is a gorgeous locomotive. It's gorgeous for the engineering as a steamer, but what it is about the livery on here, oh my goodness, I love the little red trim, the gold trim around the boiler and so forth, the silver uh, offsetting the black, that's just a gorgeous locomotive. I would love to hear what my friend Tom thinks of this. This class uh, 13, also known as the class 241, but that tempts me to go way outside my zone because that is such a gorgeous steamer. 
I wish there was a German one that looked just like it with the same paint scheme, because <laughs> then it, I would I would buy it. This is this is very gorgeous, and the new set of cars they're doing to go with it, which is the Edelweiss, um, similar to the um, Rheingold and the um, Orient Express, same time period, uh, super luxury high speed train. This one went from. Uh, France or Belgium down to uh, Basel in Switzerland, I believe, uh, just before World War II. Okay, uh, well, it pulled heavy express trains between Paris and the Atlantic harbors of Cherbourg and Le Havre, as well as between Paris and Basel. Okay, so Paris to Basel, so not Belgium. Uh, again, sometimes listening to the guys talking in German, back, talking back and forth a bit through me. Uh, but uh, gorgeous and the cars. Oh my gosh, these cars are gorgeous. But again, French, but oh, they are beautiful cars. Let's get into them real quick. Now, uh, I'm going to get up to another picture where they show the interior. What really threw me about this is the new lamp sculpting. And now, I've got gorgeous lamps in my, my two Wranglers. Actually, my first Wrangle, the lamps are first generation of trying to do lamp shapes on the table. And it's just hard form plastic, clear plastic, and it kind of looks like a lamp from a distance. The second Ryan Gold I have, which was released in 2019, um, the lamps are very cool, but these take it up a notch. It looks like Tiffany lamps on each table. They are absolutely gorgeous. These cars are stunning cars. I hope they are as quality inside as they are outside because these are stunning. Um, so if you look in the upper right hand corner, look at the picture there of those lamps. That is just something else. Though that's that just blew me away. And to see them lit up like little Tiffany lamps, it's just amazing. That is really great stuff. And they just more. And so here, um, right above me, at the top of the um, screen here, uh, what they look like looking through the window. Come on, who it? If you're not into model trains, you still got to look at them and go, that's kind of cool. And if you are into trains, you're looking like, damn, that's cool. I don't care what your era is, that's cool. Okay, and we're winding up this uh, catalog. We've got some Italian uh, flatbeds here with two 20s and a uh, 40 foot um, container for the wagons. And then some Dutch. There's a reason there's some Dutch freight here. So we've got from the Netherlands. And speaking of the Netherlands, they are bringing back the Copopler. And they're doing two versions of it. This is a very popular high-speed train that ran in the Netherlands in the 80s, I think into the early 2000s. Um, for all I know, it might still be running, but I, but I think it's now defunct. And they are releasing two versions of it, the Copopler. Uh, it's officially listed as Era 4, which would be... 70s into mid 80s but i thought some of these kept running later than that but again i don't know my train history even european train history especially if it's not german i i'm only learning german as i go along gorgeous train set not going to find its way on my layout but if somebody handed one of these one if somebody handed me this set for free i wouldn't be giving it away or selling it let's put it that way i'm not going to buy it but it's gorgeous it's cool and they're doing two variations of it. They're doing this variation, uh, the Dutch Railway Standard one, and then this one, the KLM Airlines version. KLM being the Dutch National Airways. And I've flown KLM many times, and always good flights, good people. The Dutch are some of the most fun people to deal with with airlines. I don't know why. Good, good humor, too. Good sense of humor. All right, now this is another one uh, that they were really excited about. They're doing uh, multiple variations of this. Uh, in Belgium, it's called the Class 52, but I believe it's all, maybe this one's a little different, but it, they were talking about this is all molded on the same. They were doing multiple countries with this basic locomotive. Uh, it's a Class 52 here. Um, so a Belgian locomotive. Again, not digging the livery. I can't tell you if I think it's a cool looking locomotive because it's kind of old school. Looks a little bit like eh, the 47, or not the 47, the, a little bit like the 37 or some of the UK locomotives. Or in some ways, the, the front end reminds me a little bit of the old F7s, Santa Fe's that I saw as a kid. 
Um, but again, again, this is an outsider who doesn't really know his trains, just saying there are things that remind me of other trains. And they do remind me. Even if that's wrong, they remind me. Anyhow, uh, so Belgian and some Belgian freight to go with it. Uh, um, and this is a three wagon, uh, a three container car set, container flatbed set. Um, so you get all of that that you see there. And then if you want, um, you can take off the um, Belgian freight and add this Luxembourg freight because it pulled Luxembourg too. It was Belgium and Luxembourg. So you can add this to it. And then, hint, hint, they introduce a couple of Danish sliding type uh, tarp, uh, excuse me, sliding tarp car sets. Pretty cool. Very cool to see. Um, I wish I could get some German ones of Era 6 in this style. I like this, but there's a reason they're hinting at Danish because Danish flatbed. And they give it away in the upper right-hand corner there because they're releasing this locomotive, the NOAB, the NO, NOAB, NOAB, however uh, that would be pronounced as an acronym. Um, in Denmark, it is the uh, Class MY locomotive, but it's called the NOAB. And uh, Roko's released a few versions of this. Uh, and this is the best livery of, of the ones they're releasing. This is the best livery of it, the, the Danish version. This one actually kind of looks cool. I love the red and then the white in the middle with the red door. Uh, Danish state uh, railways, very cool looking, lots of functions. And it's the first time Merklin has done this particular locomotive in this style with all this stuff they're doing to it. All kinds of cool little extra light features that Merklin is now starting to add. Very cool. And then Sweden, you know, they were kind of celebrating that they were covering Scandinavia. We haven't mentioned Norway yet, but Denmark, Norway, Sweden. Um, kind of a cool locomotive. In some ways, if this were in that drab green from that earlier locomotive I was talking about, I would probably think it's ugly. But uh, in this livery, it works. I, it's kind of cool looking in this livery. And then some Danish cars will be coming with it, passenger cars. Um, this was, let me go back, uh, Era 5. So this would have been running. Maybe a couple of these are still running in uh, Sweden. I think I said Danish. Um, this is Swedish. Not Swiss, Swedish, and not Danish, as I said a minute ago. Um, gorgeous little uh, Swedish uh, locomotive. Very cool looking. Older style model. And a beautiful rake of cars to go with it. Nice little uh, four-car set. So, pretty cool. And you also get these um, Swedish state um, sliding wall car sets, which you can also pull with that locomotive if you wanted. So, giving... The, you know, a little shout out to the Swedes there. And now here's the Norwegian. And see, here it is in that drab green. And I'm just sort of like, meh. And to my friend, uh, Stefan, who's in Norway, and a couple other guys I know in Norway, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is just, this is meh. It's the same exact locomotive, but this livery is just, looks like U.S. Army or Nor Norwegian Army. And it's just sort of meh. Of all the liveries, I mean, there's got to be a cool Norwegian livery of that, right? But no, this is kind of meh. But it's an older version of it. The others were like era three and four, era four and into era five. This one is era three, so it's an older version of it, but not nearly as. And then they give you some freight, and again, kind of plasticky looking. Maybe it just didn't photograph well. And Americans, ta-da! Here we are. Yes, Merklin does usually once a year through one of their three catalogs they release uh, offer something. Uh, American, and in this case, it's a class ES44, officially the ES44AC, and I'm sure uh, my friend Randall Ellison and a lot of other people could tell you more about it, but there it is. People nag me by getting a, get American freight, and I'm like, well, it's hard to find Merklin. Now, Merklin did release a big boy a couple years ago, very expensive, but probably the best looking version, but also maybe the most expensive version of general release companies. I'm sure there's a couple of companies that uh, are high-end companies to begin with. But anyhow, not here to talk about the big boy. Uh, this is modern era, so it fits my era. It's era six. Uh, would I get this? I don't know. I don't know. This is one of those, maybe if a mad thing comes on just to have an American locomotive to run on my <laughs> layout, I don't know. Um, I'm holding out for an Amtrak is what I'm really holding out for because an Amtrak would 
get me. This one tempts me, but an Amtrak would would lure me in. But again, you can see they've got a prototype ready to go, which means it'll probably be first half of the year, I would think. Uh, it includes dynamic smoke, so it will actually puff smoke and all kinds of light functions on it. Uh, you know, I see these and I see variations of this from the Canadian channels, the American channels. Uh, it's a very, uh, fairly common locomotive, I guess. Uh, and I've seen this livery very popular on a lot of people's um, uh, channels uh, with their uh, videos. So, yeah, I mean, there, there's a really cool... Uh, I don't know, you could start comparing some of the functions this one does versus what the American uh, company versions do, but uh, still, there it is, an American modern locomotive. And uh, some more um, looks at it, some of the detailing they're putting on it and so forth. And then they are releasing a train of uh, a rake of hoppers, but since they're showing a... Um, picture here uh, a live photograph I'm assuming that uh, they don't even have prototypes of this done so the rake of cars would be coming much later wagons sorry I said cars all right and this is their special um, unveiling for the toy fair a class 232 uh, locomotive I've seen plenty of 232s but I don't recall seeing them in the Rheingold livery Lots of functions on this one. 232 is very, very common at one time, but this is a really almost like extended version of it. And as I said, I've usually seen them in the old German Deutsche Bahn red before they went up to the the new red, which is called Fair Cares Rote. Uh, but um, yeah, very interesting looking logo. This scheme definitely does not tempt me because it's out of my era. And if I want a Rheingold, I want the early era Rheingold or the TEE. -E. Um, so I, I'm saying Rheingold, but I, I apologize. This is the TEE -E livery. Trans Europa Express. Okay, and that's it. Everything else here is accessories. Um, don't mind the little loco there. What they're advertising is Merklin doesn't release a lot of models, but uh, they are releasing a little uh, mini um, locomotive shed. And they've redesigned their Telex um, current conducting closed coupler heads. They're re-releasing them, so they're back. I've been trying to get some of these, but they've been out of stock for a while. And they are releasing these, and they've redesigned the non-current conducting ones. So uh, we'll get that. But I'm saving, I don't know if it's the best for last, but this is the big news. Merklin has finally joined the rest of the world in one way which is their basic handheld digital controller. The mobile station is mobile. You can move around with it. You can go. It's a two meter cord. So about six and a half feet. But you are limited in your mobility with the mobile station too. So Merklin has announced that the mobile station two, at least that's what they're referring to it as now. Uh, the mobile station uh, is going wireless and now instead of plugging this into now by the way you don't have to have the central station to use these um, I always recommend that if you have like five or six trains and you're only running one or two at a time on a small layout this is all you need and you can get this by itself for about 90 bucks or you can get it with a rake of track and all the accessories you need with it power pack and everything else for about 140 to 160 bucks but this is a handheld digital controller and you can do everything reprogram your train change the you can do all that with this but anyhow that said um Merklin is going wi-fi now it's not bluetooth and so there will be a little adapter and you can see how they set up oh we always say wyland um the wlan um receiver box will plug into your control box and um, so you basically have three parts you have the power adapter cord you have the digital connector box that's what you plug the power into and then you plug the central station th or the mobile station into that connector box well now you're going to have a wi-fi chip in the uh, mobile station i think i've said central station a couple times the mobile station and you plug a Wi-Fi 
receiver box into the di- and now you can go everywhere and um um and this is the one thing i don't like they say the starting setup is that um the cable is 39 inches long i think it's more than that but um so now unlimited freedom begins they are going to wi-fi so now you can go everywhere the only thing is if you do have the central station three and not everybody who runs maryland trains does but if you have the um e uh from ESU, the Central Station 3 or the Z21, you're already um, wireless because you can run everything with a phone app or on your tablet. Uh, I have the Central Station 3, so I have the Central Station 3 app. So I'm already wireless. But it still would be cool to go ahead and get wireless handheld controllers because I've already got the connector box, so I just need the controller. Uh, the mobile station wireless um and that way if people ever came over to run my trains they wouldn't have to stand here and they could stand over there or stand over there but again because i have the central station three uh they could use the um app anybody can download the maryland app and then you just log into the um the isp of the home you're in and then boom you can control the trains that is the um, new Maryland, um 2023 releases. Um, definitely some tempting things in there. And uh, the big announcement with the wireless mobile, st- mobile station ca- uh, controller. So anyhow, that is it for the big three. Uh, I don't know when Brava and some of the smaller companies will do their um, announcements, but I'll probably do those as one. But again, this is another, I tried to do this. I did it once and it was 50 minutes and I tried to go faster and it came out 47 minutes. So unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not going to try to try again. Uh, there's too much time in the day. So until then, I'm going to say, to all of you out there, I hope you enjoyed a look at some of the cool things in here. Auf Wiedersehen, tschüss, and happy trains. Take care, everybody.